from the St. Ignatius Chapel at the Manresa Jesuit Spiritual Renewal Center in Pickering, Ontario. The National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Roshan Lloyd D'Souza, CSC. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from the estate of Michael Farrell of St. Albans, Newfoundland. This Mass is offered for Martin and Agnes Farrell and their descendants, both living and deceased. We know that this television Mass brings meaning to the lives of tens of thousands of Canadians across our land and around the world, and they join with me in thanking our donor for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We know the power of prayer. Prayer connects us with God, with divine nature, and human nature. Today, as we celebrate this Eucharist, we are invited to be firm in our faith and pray persistently. Today, as we celebrate this gift, we pray that we may live in the presence of God each and every day. To enter into this banquet in a worthy manner, let us acknowledge our sins and seek God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts, the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, Continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. compassionate to all his creatures. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise 
praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is compassionate to all his creatures. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. The Lord is compassionate to all his creatures. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. The Lord is compassionate to all his creatures. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles. Simon whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Decisions. When was the last time you faced an incredibly important decision in life? I'm not talking about what kind of ice cream to have, no, but more important decisions. Maybe it was a career or financial decision that could potentially make or break your entire future. Maybe it was a family decision such as who to marry or how to train your children. Maybe you are facing such a decision in your life right now. Maybe it is causing your stress and worry. You have thought about it, prayed about, talked with others about it. 
you have weighed the pros and cons. The deadline for the decision is looming, but you just cannot make up your mind. The night before you must make the decision, you decide that the best thing you can do is eat a good meal and then get a good night of sleep. The next day you make the best decision you can and hope that you made the right decision. Imagine, however, if it wasn't just an important decision for your life or for your financial future or for your children's lives, but instead for the future of the whole world. Imagine if your decision would determine the future of every person on the face of the planet. What if the decision was not only for the future of all the world, or, but also for their eternal future? The decision you made not only affected their lives here and now, but also their eternal lives after they leave this earth. No human ruler has ever had to make that kind of a decision. In the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, Jesus is faced with this sort of a decision. He has to come to earth to show and teach people what God is like and have an everlasting relationship with God. He only has three years of ministry and by Luke chapter 6, almost half of that is gone. He knows and realizes that one of the things he must do is pass on the essential truths of why he came to a few people, who then in turn pass it on to others after he is gone. For over a year, he has been gaining hundreds of followers, but he knows that most of them have not clue about who he really is or why he truly came. So he must choose out of few to teach and train so that they might continue to minister to others when he goes back to heaven. The eternal weight of the world is on his shoulders and he must choose a few good men to pass that heavy weight to their shoulders. Imagine what it must have been like when this plan was explained to the angels in heaven. They have observed humans. They know what we are made of. They know how weak and faulty we are. Can't you just imagine Gabriel saying, what if they fail as they all do? What if they don't pass on the message like you want them to do? What if they pass it on, but their descendants don't? I hope you have a plan B, because you are going to need it, but there is no plan B. Those whom Christ chooses are the only plan there is. So what an important decision it is for Jesus to choose wisely. Which is why when we come to the chapter 6 of Luke, we see that Jesus prepares himself as well as he can for this incredibly important decision. And the amazing thing about it is that unlike us, he doesn't get a good night of sleep. When we face a difficult decision or a rough day ahead, we think the most important thing is to get a good night of sleep. Jesus, on the other hand, realizes that the most important thing for him is to be in touch and communion with God. The most important thing for Jesus is to spend the night praying. Jesus not only praying for the choice he must make the next day, but also for the healing and teaching he would do. Jesus always makes prayer his number one priority because without prayer, his ministry would have no power. Did Jesus think carefully about his choice? Certainly. Did he watch his disciples interact with one another and base his decision on that? Of course. 
But prayer and communication with God was the primary step in making such a decision. John Bunyan once said that you can do more than pray after you have prayed, but you cannot do more than pray until you have prayed. Jesus knows this, which is why whenever we see Jesus facing a critical decision or an important action, he spends extra time in prayer. Prayer becomes more important for Jesus than food or rest. Prayer was his spiritual lifeblood. It is his wide open secret to being connected with God. Are you facing an important decision? Are you worried about a choice you must make? First, pray. Second, pray. Third, pray. Think about the decision, then pray some more. Prayer is not a substitute for work, thinking, watching, suffering, or giving. Prayer is a support for all the others. Amen. Gathered in joyful hope, we offer our prayers to God who creates hearts to love. For the church and those who serve the church and for all people who preach and practice the gospel of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and hospitalized, may they feel the healing power of Christ and find comfort and hope in his constant presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those in the daily TV Mass community who are dedicated to the care of the sick, may they receive the grace to continue their ministry of compassion and caring with hope and joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving Father, you are always near to us. Hear these prayers which we make with confidence in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called as to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. The Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. Jesus the Savior reigns, the God of